Hello, fifth graders. Welcome back. This is chapter two, lesson two of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. There are three activities in this lesson, but we will be skipping activity two. So let's go ahead and get started with activity one. During this lesson, we are going to focus on this question. Where do food molecules for plants come from? I want you to take a moment and think about this question in your head. Where do food molecules for plants come from? So think about what we learned from investigating with the simulation in our last lesson. What are some ideas you now have about where food molecules for plants come from? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson two activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video and take a moment to answer this question. You will read this book to find out more about how plants get food molecules. The book we will be reading is Energy Makes It All Go. As you read, think about the question we're investigating about food molecules. What do food molecules have to do with energy? So just keep this question in mind while we read the book. Before reading Energy Makes It All Go, I want you to complete the Getting Ready to Read activity. This can be found on page 36 of your Ecosystem Restoration Workbook or on page 2 of your Chapter 2, Lesson 2 activity packet. So go ahead, pause the video, take a moment, and answer these questions. Now, looking at the table of contents and the pages of this book, what do you notice about how this book is organized? To answer the question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson two activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video, take a moment and answer question three. Now that you've had a moment to answer the question, let's look a little bit closer at the table of contents. So we start, our first category is energy for living. Then we have food for energy. Even plants need food. Plants make food for energy. Herbivores eat plants for energy. Carnivores eat animals for energy. Omnivores eat animals and plants for energy. Decomposers use dead things as food for energy. How would you group them? Energy from sunlight and finally the glossary. So if you need to, pause the video, take a moment, and update your question three. Remember, one way to understand what you're reading is to synthesize or connect together ideas in order to come to a new understanding. As you read, stop every few pages and think about what you just read. As you read, you are going to record notes about important information along with the page number where you found that information. You are going to use page 37 of your ecosystem restoration workbook, or you are going to use page four of your chapter two, lesson two activity packet. To view the reading of this book, it, you're going to have to look at a separate video. So now that you have finished the reading of the book, I want you to go back to page four and reread this page. Think about where plants get their food molecules. I am going to reread this page to refresh our memories. So it says, energy for living. Everywhere on earth, in the air, on the land, and in the water, there are living things or organisms. The organisms on earth are constantly growing, moving and doing all the things they need to do to survive. Zebras gallop, flowers bloom, whales swim, ants crawl, and birds fly. To do anything, all organisms need energy. It takes a lot of energy to power every living thing on earth all the time. Where does all this energy come from? Now let's look back at this section on page seven or go back to the book video and pause the video on page seven. I am going to reread it to refresh our memory. Even plants need food. 
It may seem strange to think of grass and other plants needing food. After all, plants can't eat. You may have heard of something called plant food, a kind of fertilizer that people add to the soil in their gardens to help plants grow. Fertilizer isn't food, however. You can't actually feed a plant. Fertilizers are really just nutrients that help plants grow better, like vitamins for plants. A plant can't get energy from nutrients just as you couldn't get energy by eating only a vitamin pill. If plants don't eat, how do they get their food? So now that we reread these pages, I want you to answer this question. Do you see any ideas about plants and food that would help you learn where food molecules for plants come from? To answer this question, you can write the answer in Chapter 2, Lesson 2 Activity Packet, a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Don't forget to use page 4 of the book and page 7 of the book to help you answer this question. Pause the video now to answer this question. Okay. Now, on page 37, if you have not already, record any notes about the information on page 7 from the book. Remember to record the page number that you're getting your information on. One important vocabulary word from this activity is energy. Energy is the ability to make things move or change. That is all I have for activity one. Check the next video for activity three. Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter two, lesson two of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. We already did activity one. Remember, we are skipping activity two, so we're going to go ahead and get started with activity three. Before we really dive in, I want you to turn back to page 37 of your ecosystem restoration workbook or turn to page four of your chapter two, lesson two activity packet and discuss or think about some of the ideas you recorded from the book with someone near you or in your head. Go ahead and pause the video to do this now. Now we'll synthesize information from different sources to come to a new understanding about how plants get food molecules. We are going to be looking at our book, Energy Makes It All Go, and our ecosystem restoration simulation. These two sources are going to help us get a new understanding to answer the question, where do food molecules for plants come from? Before we begin, and before we start looking at the simulation, I want you to think back to the book that you just read and answer this question. What new understandings did you get from the book? To answer this question, you can write your answer in your chapter two, lesson two activity packet in a notebook. You can talk to someone around you or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and do this now. Next, we'll observe the simulation again to look for ideas about where plants get their food molecules. So we are going to observe the ecosystem restoration simulation to look for ideas about where plants get their food molecules. So let's go ahead and open that simulation. Okay, so I'm going to press play and let's just uh, observe again what we notice. So we have our plants, our rabbits, mushroom, and wolves. Remember the gray diamonds are carbon dioxide that's in the air. Our sun is giving us energy. Our soil, we have our nutrients and water. So I'm going to go ahead and see what happens if I take away the sun. So now let's observe. So I am noticing it did not take very long for the plants to start to wither. This makes a lot of sense since in our book, energy makes it all go. Sunlight was a very important part of what was going on. So let's keep watching and see what happens. So I'm noticing that the rabbits are starting to wither and die out. So if you notice the plants have a lot less matter, 
mushrooms have a lot more matter because remember those are decomposers so now the plants are gone let's see what happens the rabbits are starting to die a little bit more rapidly and because of this i'm going to assume that the wolves are going to start dying as well so i'm going to go ahead and add the plants back and the sunlight back and now what i am going to do is I am going to now get rid of the carbon dioxide in the ecosystem and see what happens there. It looks like adding the sun restored balance throughout the ecosystem, but now it looks like the plants are starting to wither again without carbon dioxide. I wonder why that is happening. And I think we know from our last observation without the sun, without plants, then the rabbits will start to die and then the wolves will start to die. So let's go ahead and add carbon dioxide back. And now let's remove some water and see what is going to happen now without water. Okay, it looks like the plants and the rabbits are starting to wither. The plants are totally gone now. There's a lot of matter with our mushrooms or our decomposers, because remember they get energy from droppings or dead organisms. So now the rabbits are gone and it looks like the wolves are starting to die out. So let's go ahead and add back the water, back the rabbits and the plants. So what I am noticing is that we need a balance of all of these elements for a nice balanced ecosystem. So let's go ahead and pause the sim and move back to our presentation. So now that we have read the book and re-looked at our simulation, the next question you are going to answer is, what information or new ideas did you get from the sim that help you understand how plants get food molecules? To answer this question, you can write your answer in your chapter two, lesson two activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question now. My next question is, if you put all your ideas together from the simulation and from the book, what new understanding do we come to about where food molecules for plants come from? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson two activity packet. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Go ahead, pause the video, and answer this question. That concludes our lesson two for chapter two. Thank you so much. I'll see you for lesson three. Hello fifth graders, this is the reading of Energy Makes It All Go. Feel free to pause the video whenever you need to, and please make sure to follow along as I read. Let's get started. Energy for Living. Everywhere on earth, in the air, on the land, and in the water, there are living things or organisms. The organisms on Earth are constantly growing, moving, and doing all the things they need to do to, to survive. Zebras gallop, flowers bloom, whales swim, ants crawl, and birds fly. To do anything, all organisms need energy. It takes a lot of energy to power every living thing on Earth all the time. Where does all this energy come from? Organisms need food matter to build their bodies. But that's not the only thing organisms do with food. They also need food to get energy. Organisms get energy by breaking down some of the food matter they take in. Let's look at an example of a rabbit. A rabbit uses matter to build its body, but it also gets energy by breaking down food matter. The rabbit uses the energy it gets from breaking down food to do all of the things you can see a rabbit do, such as run, jump, eat, and have babies. It can also use energy to do things that are harder to see, like keep warm, breathe, grow, pump blood, and much more. Every organism in an ecosystem, a rabbit, a fox, an ant, tiny bacteria, and even the grass gets its energy from food matter. 
Even plants need food. It may seem strange to think of grass and other plants needing food. After all, plants can't eat. You may have heard of something called plant food, a kind of fertilizer that plants add to the soil in their gardens to help plants grow. Fertilizer isn't food, however. You can't actually feed a plant. Fertilizers are just nutrients that help plants grow better, like vitamins for plants. A plant can't get energy from nutrients, just as you couldn't get energy by eating only a vitamin pill. Plants don't eat. How do they get their food? Plants make food for energy. Plants don't have to eat because they make their own food. What do they make it out of? Even a plant can't make something out of nothing. To make their own food, plants need to take in matter first. Plants don't have mouths for eating but they do have tiny openings in their leaves that take in gases from the air. One of the gases in the air is called carbon dioxide, and plants use molecules of carbon dioxide as one of the ingredients for making their food. The other ingredient is molecules of water, which plants take in through their roots. The roots take in water molecules from the soil all around them. By catching sunlight, a plant's leaves collect the energy needed for making food. Using energy from sunlight, plants change the water and carbon dioxide molecules into food matter. The food matter stores energy that the plants took from the sunlight. Plants use food matter for energy the same way animals do. Plants need energy to grow, move, and make seeds. Looking at the first picture, through a microscope you can see tiny holes on the surface of a leaf that let in gases from the air. Our picture below that, roots take in water from the soil. Next page, this photo of the inside of a leaf was taken using a microscope. The green dots are where the plant makes food matter. Next picture, plants use their leaves to collect energy from sunlight. And the picture below, plants may not move fast, but they still use a lot of energy. Plant roots are powerful enough to break solid rock. In addition to using food matter for energy, plants build their bodies by changing food matter into body matter. When an animal eats a plant, the plant's body matter becomes food matter for the animal. This is one reason why plants are so important to an ecosystem. They bring food matter into the ecosystem. All animals need to eat food to survive, but animals can't make their own food. They depend on plants to do it for them. Only plants and a few other plant-like organisms such as algae can make food matter that stores energy from sunlight. Looking at this picture, oak trees and other plants use their leaves to collect energy from sunlight. The picture below, like all plants, clover can make its own food matter which stores energy from sunlight. Next page, poppies open their flowers each morning and close them each night, and that takes a lot of energy. Poppy plants get energy from the food they make. The picture below, these tiny organisms are kind of algae plant-like organisms that live in the water. Like plants, algae make their own food and matter that stores energy from sunlight. Lots of ecosystems depend on algae. And the picture next to it, giant kelp is a kind of algae that can grow 30 centimeters or 12 inches taller every day. That takes a lot of food matter. Herbivores eat plants for energy. Herbivores eat plants for, or algae and almost nothing else. Herbivores need the food matter they get from plants for energy and to grow their bodies. Plants store energy from sunlight. The energy herbivores get from eating plants is energy that originally came from the sun. This picture, the sea turtle is a herbivore that eats mainly seaweed and sea grass. The picture next to it, rabbits are herbivores. They eat plants and almost nothing else. Next page. These insects are herbivores that eat the stems of leaves and plants. The picture next to it. Birds can be herbivores too. This bird eats mainly fruits and seeds. Picture below. This lizard is an herbivore that eats mainly leaves. The picture next to it. Manatees are herbivores that eat underwater plants. Carnivores eat animals for energy. Carnivores eat animals and almost nothing else. Even though carnivores get their energy by eating other animals, that energy originally came from sunlight. 
when a carnivore eats an herbivore, the carnivore gets energy from the body of the herbivore. The herbivore got that energy by eating plants or algae, which store energy from sunlight. This picture? A tuna is a fast-swimming carnivore that hunts smaller fish. The picture below? Ladybugs are carnivores that eat other insects. Next page. This wolf has caught a rabbit to eat. Next picture. This spider is a carnivore that makes a web to catch the insects it eats. And the picture below. This whale is a carnivore that eats mainly squid. Omnivores eat animals and plants for energy. Omnivores get their energy to live and grow by eating both animals and plants, or algae. Just as for herbivores, all of the energy omnivores get from eating plants originally come from sunlight. Just as for carnivores, all of the energy omnivores get from eating other animals originally came from sunlight too. So let's look at this picture. Grizzly bears catch fish, pick berries, and eat lots of other plants and animals. They are omnivores. This picture below, this lizard is an omnivore that eats fruit and insects. The next picture, this slug is an omnivore that will eat almost anything it can find. Next page, blue crabs are omnivores that eat algae and small ocean animals. Next picture, this fox is an omnivore that hunts small animals such as rabbits, but also eats fruits and seeds. Picture below, this bird is an omnivore that drinks from flowers, but also eats insects. Next page. This huge fish is an omnivore that eats animals, algae, and plants. Decomposers use dead things as food for energy. A lot of people think mushrooms are plants, but they aren't. Plants make their own food, and a mushroom can't do that. If a mushroom isn't a plant, then what is it? A mushroom gets energy by breaking down dead organisms and droppings. Ecologists call organisms that do this decomposers. Decomposers use dead things as food matter. Most decomposers are tiny organisms you can't see. Even though you can't see them, these tiny decomposers live in the air, soil, and water in every ecosystem. Decomposers play an important role in ecosystems as they break down droppings, fallen leaves, and dead organisms Decomposers release nutrients into the ecosystem. These nutrients can help plants and algae grow. The droppings, fallen leaves, and dead organisms that decomposers break down come from plants, herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, and other decomposers. That means all the energy that decomposers get by breaking down dead matter originally came from, you guessed it, sunlight. Let's look at the picture below. Mushrooms are not plants. They are actually decomposers. Next page. The fuzzy white fungus growing on this rotten strawberry is a kind of decomposer. Next picture. This fungus is a decomposer that is getting energy by breaking down a dead tree. Picture below. These bacteria are too small to see without a microscope. They are decomposers that live in soil. And then the next picture. These tiny bacteria are decomposers that live inside you and help you break down your food. How would you group them? Putting organisms into groups can help people understand nature, but nature is much too complicated to make this an easy task. Even ecologists often have a hard time putting organisms into simple groups. These two pages show some organisms that are hard to fit into groups. So picture below. Many ecologists group worms with decomposers. Worms eat fallen leaves, dead organisms, and droppings that they find in the soil. But tiny bacteria living in the worm's guts are the ones that actually breaking down the worm's food into nutrients. Do you think worms are decomposers? Next picture. This vulture is a scavenger that doesn't kill other animals, but eats the meat of animals that have already died. Some ecologists group scavengers with decomposers will some group them with carnivores or omnivores. Where do you think scavengers should be grouped? The Venus flytrap is an interesting example. People sometimes call the Venus flytrap a carnivorous plant, but it is, is it really a carnivore? Carnivores get their energy from meat, but Venus flytraps don't get any energy from the meat of the flies they trap. 
Like other plants, Venus flytraps make their own food out of water and carbon dioxide gas from the air, using energy from the sun. If they don't get energy from meat, why do these plants trap flies? Venus flytraps live in environments where the soil doesn't have many nutrients. They trap flies and other small animals and kill them, making sure that the dead animals will decompose right there in the plant's trap. The fly trap doesn't get energy from the decomposing animals, but it does get nutrients, the same kind of nutrients that decomposers usually put into the soil. The Venus fly trap is definitely a plant, but would you call it a decomposer too? Energy from sunlight. Without energy, organisms couldn't survive, grow, keep warm, move, or make babies or seeds. Plants and other plant-like organisms make their own food matter that stores energy from sunlight. That same energy from sunlight then gets passed on to the other organisms on Earth. Living things may be carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, decomposers, or plants, but the source of their energy is almost always the same, the sun. Let's take a moment here and look at the important words pointed out in the glossary. You can pause the video to get a better look. That concludes the reading for Energy Makes It All Go. Thank you so much for joining me.